Hi, my name is Crystal. At the age of 50, I was diagnosed with stage 2B breast cancer. Back when I was 36, I was pregnant and I've noticed a lump on my breast, so I called my doctor. My doctor agreed that there was definitely a lump there, but there's nothing that we could do about it since I was expecting. Soon after my daughter was born, my doctor removed that lump and a biopsy was performed and fortunately the mass was benign. I began having annual mammograms right after that. In August 2014, I found another lump on the same breast, just a different location. I went back to that same surgeon that removed the first mass, so I wasn't really worried about it. I just assumed that it was just a reoccurrence. My doctor ordered another mammogram and the results came back with suspicious findings. So the doctor ordered a breast ultrasound. Unfortunately, those results came back that that mass was malignant. My entire life changed that day. That following week, I met with my genetics counselor. It was determined that I carry a gene mutation that was diagnosed BRCA1 positive, HER2 negative. I'm like, what does that mean? It means that my receptors will not respond to hormone therapy. It also means that that gene that I carry, my siblings and my children may also carry that mutation as well. So they need to be tested immediately. My plea to you is please continually perform your self checks. As you can see, I had annual mammograms and I never had a problem, never detected any type of um, bad findings, any type of adverse findings at all. But with monthly self checks, I was able to detect that mass, get treatment, and beat cancer. I want you to beat cancer too. Please take the first step toward good breast health and get checked out. You can do self breast checks every month. All you have to do is just check in the mirror, check yourself out in the shower. You can even check yourself out laying down on the couch or in the bed. Please. Do your monthly self checks. Thank you. Stay healthy. Good morning or good afternoon. This is Jill Perkins from Tabernacle Baptist Church. And I'm here today to give you my testimony on how good God has been to me over the years of me surviving breast cancer twice. And I want to start off with um, quoting a scripture from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, the uh, New King, Jer King James Version. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And also... Hebrews 11.1, 1. now faith is the substance of, substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, my journey had a lot to do with these two scriptures. Starting off, I had breast cancer. Um, I was working at the, uh, for the state of Ohio, and I got a little nudge, and it was like somebody telling me to go get your mammogram done. There just so happened to be a radiology department on the 10th floor of the building that I worked in, and I put it off, and several days later, I got a, a thud, a thump, or a nudge, a big nudge, like the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me something. And I jumped up out of my chair, and I went straight up to the radiology department and set up my appointment for my mammogram, which they scheduled it immediately the next day. So I came to work in good cheer. I went, went to get my mammogram. And the radiologist came out, and he was very blunt. And he told me, you have cancer. Ah, 
I was angry at him. I was so angry at him for just being so blunt. But he told me there was a reason for him being as blunt as he was, to give me some oomph to go get my doctor, um, cancer doctor, to get a cancer doctor and to move forward on this because he did see cancer. So I did that. And um, I went on and, you know, had the biopsies and, you know, the actual uh, procedure where they took out uh, the cancer. And uh, it was so horrific as far as uh, when I found out I was really in tears uh, when I went back to my office, I could not work. And um, I went to my church and wanted to talk to my pastor who was not there and was greeted with some spirits. I won't say what kind, but I was suffering internally, spiritually, and I, you know, I just didn't know which way to go. And then I left there with these spirits hanging over me and me hurting about the news that I had cancer. And I went to a family member's home. Well, I was very shocked because there too, I was greeted with some things that I shouldn't have been greeted with. And I couldn't tell anybody. I hadn't told a soul. So I left there and I went home and I cried, and I cried out to God. I didn't know what to do, but I know he did. And that's why the trusting in the Lord with all of my heart, I just found a lot of peace in that moment where I didn't worry about it. And I finally eventually told my family member after a week went by, but they, um, they sympathized with me and the rest is history. Well, from there, from there, you know, I rec recuperated from that surgery and time went on 10 years later and the cancer came back. Oh, the diagnosis, uh, it, it, uh, it took me somewhere, but I knew God was with me. He was with me during the time that I got it the first time. This second time was a lot worse than the first time 10 years later. The surgery was a little bit more extensive uh, than the first one. So they did the surgery and uh, after the surgery, the surgery went well, but after the surgery, things didn't go too well. They couldn't wake me up. And my mother couldn't get there because she had just lost her husband, my dad and she doesn't drive. So my girlfriend came and she moved me around, slapped me around, kept talking to me because they didn't know what to do for me. So I woke up while she was sitting at my side and she told me that they almost lost me. But, and to know that she was there, she gave me some bad news about her mother had just died that morning and I was just blown away that she was there to be with me during a very bad time. And had she not been there, I probably, I don't wanna say, God only knows that I woke up uh, with her prayers and her being somewhat in the nurse's field, she called on the other nurses to get, to get me in there when my vitals went down. But I came through it. But God's been so good to me. He's gotten me through some battles, and I know that the battle was not mine. It was his, and I just turned it over to him. But going through that, I had to suffer three years of being away from my job after that surgery uh, because of a uh, bad back, uh, kind of due to that surgery, the way they had me bent on that table, kind of messed up my back. But this was God's way. I think I really needed that time off. And I, I prayed daily. And, and during that time, I wrote, a, did a promotional CD. And I just want you to hear that song, one of the songs from it. 
as we uh, finish up this uh, testimony. But God is good. I just want you to know God is good. He's there with you no matter what. You know, if you have somebody to talk to, that's good. But talking to God is better than talking to anybody. And I know that for a fact. Um, he told me to lean on him and he would direct my path. And I just thank him every day that to look at me, you would not know what I've been through. But it's been pretty bad experience while I was going through it. But I'm, I've come out on the other side of it for the good. And for the good of those that love the Lord, and I truly love the Lord, and he's still walking with me. The CD has three songs on it, which you're going to hear the first song, which is called Footprints. I was asking God to keep his footprints in the sand for me. Master plan, because I know he had a plan for me, and he was not through with me yet. And then the last one was nothing but your presence. God, I thank you for being so ever present during my time of need. And with that, I just want to say a quick prayer. God, we thank you. I thank you, God, for just stepping in right on time and you holding the torch for me when I needed you the most. I thank you and I give it all. I give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And I just know that you're going to keep on doing what you're doing for me because you're not through with me yet. I love you, God. Yes, I, I, I pray to you, Lord, that you would. Help me live for my life. Help me live for my life with you. With you. Give me strength, Lord, that I may find you. Keep your footprints in the sand to carry me. To carry me, yeah. Keep your word, yeah. Keep your foot. Help me to keep on pressing forward. Keep your word, yeah. Keep your footprints in the sand. Now put your hand on me, Lord. Touch me, touch me. Straighten out that crooked road in my pathway and keep it straight and narrow to you. To you. I 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good afternoon. I am Barbara Benzant, a member of Tabernacle for the past 64 years and a breast cancer survivor for four years. As a little toddler, my mother used to dress me in the color pink. And I am told that comments were always shared that I was pretty in pink not knowing that 76 years later that I would be a spokesman for my cancer journey, displaying the cancer color of, you guessed it, pink. In January 2016, I underwent mastectomy surgery on my left breast, and 15 lymph nodes were removed. Later, I endured weeks of chemo and radiation. I lost my appetite my hair, and 15 pounds, but I never did I lose my faith and trust in the Lord to be by my side. Every opportunity afforded me was and still is used to give him all the praise for seeing me through then and now. Last year, while waiting to check out at Walmart, the lady in front of me remarked about the turquoise scarf and cap that I was wearing. I shared that turquoise was my favorite color and that I wear the cap to cover my hair loss due to cancer. She walked over to me and flipped her hair and said, your hair is going to grow back just like mine, for I too lost my hair to cancer. And you just keep that smile and attitude that you have, and you will be all right. She hugged me, and as she was walking away, she began to wipe her eyes. And I asked the Lord, did I make her cry? And his reply was, no. You just made her remember her journey. Maybe today I have made someone else remember their journey. I give thanks and praise to my immediate family for being by my side then and now as I endure the discomfort of neuropathy in my hands and feet. Thanks to my daughter Denise for the gift of a new 2016 Nissan in December. For as she says, I give you this gift for kicking cancer's butt. I have hosted a cancer fundraiser at Madden Golf Course for the past three years and was presented this plaque by an official from the American Cancer Society for my fundraising efforts. And it just says a certificate of appreciation hereby presented to Barbara Vinzant for generously investing in the American Cancer Society's mission to save lives, celebrate the lives, and lead the fight for a world without cancer. Because of her fundraising efforts, the American Cancer Society can be there for those affected by breast cancer in every community, dated January 2020. 
I want to say uh, thanks to the, my Tabernacle family and the local Cancer Society, which is Sisters Supporting Sisters. We used to uh, meet once a month at Mount Enon Church, but because of the virus, that has been um, placed into a Zoom presentation. And so the girls, our survivors, still get together and share uh, on the Zoom um, presentation. We have a, you know, we serve a, um, and I thanks to my Tabernacle family for all of their support, and we serve a great God. And you know, he heard my cry for Exodus 15, 26 says, if you listen carefully, to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Be safe and be sure to get your mammograms. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you. This is another poster as I uh, hosted fundraisers every year. This was taken in January of 2020 at Madden Golf Course. And there were over uh, 50 or more people that supported that fundraiser. And I took a check of over $2,500 down to Cincinnati to the um, American Cancer Society. But as with the coronavirus this, uh, virus this year, I have not been able to sponsor a fundraiser, but I encourage all of you to make a donation to the American Cancer Society. I want to thank uh, my church for giving me this opportunity to share with you. And as you know, we have to speak up and speak out when the occasion arises. And I can recall I was in Walgreens um, back at the beginning of the year, and I ran into Bootsy Neal. And she said, Barbara, I haven't seen you in a long time. And I said, yes, I've been out of the way. I've had my cancer and chemo and all. And she said, oh, I didn't know that. You look well. And I said, I feel okay. I just have the neuropathy, which hampers my balance and my uh, speech sometimes and so we were talking and as I got ready to pay for my purchase the young lady at the counter said miss I too have suffered cancer I know exactly what you were talking about when you were sharing with that lady I have had neuropathy but I have young children and I had to have my sister come and stay with me to help me and it appeared that she just wanted to unload and share, so I asked her for her phone number, and she gave it to me, and I called her that night, and we were on the phone for over an hour as she shared with me what she had gone through and what she is going through then. And it appeared that she needed to unload, and as we completed our conversation, she thanked me so much for the time given her to just share. And that's what we have to do as survivors. We have to be listening ear to those who want to unwind and have a story to tell. Well, I've told you my story. I hope you have enjoyed it. And Curtis, am I pretty in pink? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, Tabernacle. Goodbye. Good evening. Um, my name is Gerald Robinson, and I'm a member here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. And I'm here as a part of Cancer Awareness Month uh, that is being celebrated all around the country and all around the world. I'm here to, to give my testimony of cancer. Um, but I'd like to say first, even though it's Cancer Awareness Month and we typically think of October as Women Breast Cancer Month, men, men get cancer, breast cancer also. But I'm here to talk about another cancer, 
fact is more prevalent to men, prostate cancer and colon cancer. Men, I'm talking basically to you today because it's so important to get your yearly exam, especially when you reach the age of 45. Get your yearly exams and, and, and stay up on your health. But my journey really starts in a different place, and that's why I want to start first. In August of 2019, um, I had gone to my, my urologist to get my uh, semi-annual uh, test and um, had my blood work done. And the next day, was our men's retreat up in uh, Maria Stein, Ohio, that the men go on every, every year. And while we were at the retreat, uh, Pastor bought me a plaque. And I said, okay, Pastor, thank you, you know. And, and I was, I was, I was thankful. So when I got home, uh, about a week later, I was saying, well, where am I going to hang this plaque? Well, in my bathroom on my mirror is this post-it. Now, it's faded. I know you can't see it because I can barely read it anymore. But it's Proverbs 3, uh, 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So I decided that this plaque that pastor gave me, which says, we walk by faith, not by sight, which is 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. I said, oh, okay, they pretty much, they pretty much go together. So this was hanging on the bathroom window, and this is hanging right to the side of the, the I mean, the bathroom mirror. And this is right beside it on the wall. So whenever I go into the bathroom, I'm constantly reading these two scriptures. But note I said, reading, reciting. And this will make meaning later on. Um, the, the Monday after the retreat, I went back to the, my doctor and he gave me the results of the, uh, of the blood test. And he said, well, they, your numbers are high. He said, well, I'm not going to be too concerned about it right now. We'll wait to December. So in De I didn't think any more about it. And in December, I went back for my uh, exam. And he took the blood test again. And they came back high. And he says, well, look. I'm going to have you to take a biopsy to see what's going on. And in January, I had a biopsy where they took 12 samples. And boy, did that hurt. But they took 12 samples. And of the 12, two came back cancerous. And those two cancers, he said, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 was a 6, barely a 6 but the other one was a high seven. But they both were caught early. And he said that he wanted me to go into uh, cancer treatment. So he set up an appointment for me to go and have a full body scan to make sure I didn't have any cancers anywhere else in my body. And that came back negative, that there was no other cancers in my body. And I you know, thank God for his blessings. And this is when I began to realize that uh, God's blessings was in, in the works. And again, these two, I'm beginning to look at them different now whenever I go into the bathroom. And in the mornings, shaving, I'm not reading them anymore. I'm praising them as I say it. We walk by faith, not by sight and to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. So I was scheduled uh, for March to go into 
to uh, treatment. But because of the pandemic, everything shut down. And in mid-April, they set up for me in my treatment. Oh, let me re rewind. Uh, when I found out that it was cancerous, I spoke with some, a few men here at church, um, Deacon Robinson, Jesse Logan, James Wilson, uh, Reverend Jackson, who have all gone through this. And they all gave me encouragement. And Deacon Robinson, you know, was telling me, he said, well, nowadays it's pretty much a piece of cake, which really confirmed what uh, my urologist has said. And Deacon Robinson knows my urologist and, and vice versa. So I felt real assured and I felt safe. And I be, like I said, I began to really lean on these verses that I had just been reciting every day, but now they have meaning. So they told me the first step of my treatment was gonna to be to have two shots, one in April, and the next one would be in June. And what the shots were to do were to kill 70 to 80% of the cancer by starving it to death. And what that means is that my testosterone would fall from an average of 200 down to as low as they can get it, uh, which starves this cancer that feeds on it. So I had my first shot in April. Now up to this point, everything's fine. I, I had no problems with, with the shots, the side effects. And the second one in June was the same. But I said, you know, the Lord always has something funny in everything to give you a little sense of humor and to, to ease your, your anxiety. <laughs> well, ladies, I want to tell you, I understand now what hot flashes are. That's the one side effect of those two shots. And man, do I understand. <laughs> so I said, well, Lord, okay, you got jokes. But those I'm saying is the only two, the only side effect that I had for those two shots. And in July 22nd, I started my radiation treatment. And I had, uh, it was scheduled for eight weeks but it only went six weeks. And uh, they told me that everything looked real good and that um, they assured me that uh, everything is under control. And on the 26th of this month, October, uh, I'll go get the final analysis. But this is my story and this is my praise and my testimony from going to just reciting God's word, but now living and understanding what God's word is and how it is given to you long before you even realize what it's given to you for. And when pastor gave me this, he was, a, he was uh, confirming this and they both went together and they both gave me strength along with other verses and, and songs that I would constantly sing for encouragement. But the one I lean on most is Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, and it goes on and on. So now they have meaning for me and, and has increased my faith and my trust in the Lord, that he's always with us. He's Jehovah Shammah, because he has promised that he would never leave us or never forsake us, and that nothing or no one would ever be able to snatch us out of his hand. And he is my Jehovah Rapha, my great physician, 
my healer who has brought me through this phase of my life. And he is my Jehovah Shalom, my peace, my comforter. And he is my Lord, my Savior, and my Redeemer. And those that know me well is another Bible verse that I always, whenever I send out cards or when I, anything, I always have numbers, um, 6, 24, and 25. And um, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I mean, it's the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord be gracious to you and turn his head face towards you and give you peace. And he has given me that through this journey. And I thank him and I praise him. And I want to also thank all of my church family, all of you, whether I physically talk with you or you've known my condition and your prayers and your concerns and your cards. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I love this church and I love you. Thank you. God bless all of you all. Amen.